Ah, oh, greetings and welcome once again to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where we attempt to provide everyone out there listening and viewing with a perhaps perhaps some enhancements to their life in dealing with everyday life issues and some beneficial things that may actually work. Have you ever been to, the, perhaps, I don't know, in India, however, in America, sometimes we'll say to people, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Yes. Have I you did. ever heard that? Yes. Definitely. Has anyone ever given you the lemons? Has anyone ever given you the sugar or the water or the pitcher? Or the instructions on how to make it? <laughs> Many times, actually. <laughs> if they have? Yes. Okay. Okay, normally when, when they tell somebody like that, they just say, make, lay, make, make uh, lemonade, and they walk away. Isn't that correct? Sure. So, however, the purpose of these particular broadcasts is to give you some type of a useful thing that can actually work in what we like to call the real world. So today I would like to... Uh, share with the, the students and have them share a little bit about uh, an experience that we had last Friday on when we went to a retirement community. And can you talk, share a little bit about that, Reva? What was sure. your experience? So actually we went to this place where, our, I mean, there were a lot of elderly people were there. So before entering that institute, I had no idea what I'm going into. But when I went there and listened to them and see that and see them, I saw they were like such a, they have given their whole life into this, into, into the service of other people, helping them, helping those people who are in need and living such a simple life and have so much humility. Their feet were on ground and they have no air of arrogance at all. That just inspired me a lot. Derek, what was your takeaway? Well, being in a place with a whole bunch of individuals that had given their life to help others. It was interesting to note that you also do need to take care of yourself at the end of the day to fully be able to help the others around you. Absolutely, and as we age, sometimes we, we face different types of challenges. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about what, what generally occurs as we move along the lifespan? Yeah, well, not occurring in everybody, but as people age, there are several disorders that people can uh, develop, one of them being dementia or Alzheimer's, which is a irreversible uh, disease that affects your brain. Also with aging, people can experience depression, whether it's from loss of other family members, a spouse, um, diseases that they have to overcome, or just other life changes. They can also go through delirium, um, changes with their mobility, increase in falling, gait disorders, and also just visual and hearing disorder or changes and when an individual perhaps can't perform like they used to they can't let's say clean the house or they can't cook thanksgiving dinner for their family or run around the block or do these type of things what what can happen to an individual's outlook i think that it can be really debilitating to their outlook on life and how they feel about themselves, where they would compare themselves to what they used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And at some point when people, when individuals can become depressed, they can become frustrated and they can become lonely and then they can become angry. Absolutely. They, they can become angry and they can become resentful mm -hmm. at, the, at the world. Uh, have you ever experienced that, Reva, with uh, you have been around any? Absolutely. I totally agree. My own grandmother, she was such a kind woman, but as she got a stroke, so after that she was kind of dependent on us, so which increased her frustration, she was more angry, she was more bitter, but as a person she was still a kind woman. Oh, well, sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when people begin to perhaps lose control of some of their bodily functions, uh, they can become embarrassed that, that, that that's happening, that they, the people that they took care of for so long, now they're in a position where they uh, need some help. And quite often, it's, a, it's so difficult to, to accept help. It's often easy to ask for it. It's another, it's another condition to accept it. Mm -hmm. So how did, you, how did you find that these individuals down there, how did you find that these, these folks uh, accepted where they were at? Um, well, it's particularly in the place we were, it was a life choice that they made, uh, some at a young age, some later in life, but there was some calling to them where they felt that the need to help others was greater than the need or was, the, was more beneficial to their life 
than um, being able or going out and doing other things that will benefit themselves. They found that helping others was the best way to live their life. One of the most dramatic and life-changing events in a person's life is when they begin to feel that they're losing some of their independence. Mm -hmm. They feel that they're losing some of their independence, uh, particularly in, in areas of driving, the driver's license, mm -hmm. and perhaps beginning to speak about uh, the transition to some even some type of an assisted living place. I don't know whether you've ever experienced that in your life or not, Derek. I have not. Actually. Okay. Well, as a physician's assistant and as a physician, you'll be faced on a regular basis with family members coming to you and saying, I don't want mom to drive anymore. Mom, sh mom, shouldn't, mom shouldn't be living alone anymore. Dad shouldn't be doing this. And, and guess what? It's, they want you to tell them. Mm -hmm. They want you to tell them. So how would you handle that? Um, I think it's important that as a physician assistant or a physician that you take the patient's interests at the at the best hand, not allowing others that may be involved in their life to persuade your decision that if the patient is able to drive and it, there is no harm to other people involved, then I believe that as if they are physically able to do it, then you should listen to what the patient has to say versus what a family member would have to say. And quite often when we find that there's children and or another spouse partner and they're talking to a doctor and that other individuals in the room it's like that they're not there mm -hmm. like they the, then they begin that their opinions don't matter and that they don't have a voice and that they're not included in that conversation they're not included in decisions mm -hmm. when you're when you're that disrespected and you're you're that marginalized and you're made to feel that less than what what generally follows in, in there's a, a lack of self-worth you know there's a sense of that they have an accomplishment, you know, and there's a lot of, I think depression also sways in. Well, of course, ab mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So everyone, have you ever, and you've been in perhaps some nursing homes, some assisted living homes, been around some elderly people, and what do those folks want more than anything? Someone to listen to them. Someone to listen to them. Everyone has a story, do they not? Everybody has their own you've, story. You've been mm -hmm. here, and it deserves to be heard. Perhaps not commented on, it deserves to be heard mm -hmm. fully. So how many times have you been in a place where somebody will say something, and somebody will say, in a moment, I'll be back, you'll be okay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're okay today, and they never look at them, and they never make eye contact, and, and there's not that human touch. Mm -hmm. there's, not that, there's not that human contact and that human touch. So I applaud you for coming down on Friday and providing that for those those individuals. Uh, so on the on the other hand, when we're going through, it's uh, it's incumbent upon us to assist people with allowing us to help them help themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So particularly in matters of nutrition, particularly in matters of sleep, particularly in matters of, of, of uh, taking the medication as directed, uh, and also social social ability. Uh, so many so many individuals in in the elderly years become isolated. Mm -hmm. Become isolated. And they can all that can also lead to a pattern of drug and alcohol abuse, prescription drug abuse, mm -hmm. and also alcohol alcohol abuse. So these are some of the things that, that, we, that we watch out for. And attempting to care for an individual in that situation can lead to some frustration. And, and frustration can lead to anger. Mm -hmm. And anger can lead to bitterness. Mm -hmm. And, and lead, to, lead to some angry words. Lead to some, have you ever seen anything like that? I have definitely seen it in more of a, like a, a working matter versus my own family but just seeing family members getting frustrated with their their other family members by being in the room with them or over talking them or trying to put in their input and just the patient seems to almost lose themselves when mm -hmm. another person in their family gets angry or frustrated or tries to speak up for them well sure when a person's when a person's feeling disrespected when a person tells them you don't know that's not the way you think oh you, you you're so forgetful you can't remember a thing uh, and, and, and disrespecting an individual like that, I, out of my own 
situation. I was at a home not too terribly long ago, and I saw a child arguing with, with apparently what was their mother, telling them, admonishing them, being angry with them for telling me, you were so angry with me the last time you were here. And, and that person could not remember could not remember them even being there. And however, that person kept that up and uh, what was the original purpose of them coming to visit? However, how did it end up? Yeah. And sometimes individuals, when they have memory lapses or can't remember or keep repeating things again and over and over, uh, we have to watch ourselves that we don't get frustrated and that we take a kind and compassionate view of people and realize and try to see the world through their eyes. Try to see, try to see the world through their eyes, and when we when we look at things in a loving and kind, compassionate way, and realize what a tremendous privilege it is to be with someone toward the end of their lives, to, what a privilege it is to be with them during that time, during those years. And my hope is that you'll you'll consider that when we're around people, because uh, normally when when we're around elderly people like that, what's what's our normal thing is how fast can I get away? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the United States, we're more of an individualistic type of society, and yourself will, and if you can't solve problems, or if you have to ask for help that you're perceived for as weak, which is uh, a direct opposite, uh, particularly in some Asian cultures, which has more of a collective mentality, more of a group mentality. Are you you aware of that? Yes, we were talking about yesterday. So talk, about yes, talk about that. So Reba. me and uh, Jim was talking about that how uh, our, my culture and the Western culture has a lot of difference. Our in our culture, it's it's more about the family. Family comes first, and then you get the individual approach. But in Western, it's about the individual comes first, and later the family. So that's what help us in Asia that. The family, it's kind of like our support system. It will help you and, you know, help you go through all the bad phase or the good phase. So that's kind of like question to us. Mm -hmm. But in individual, you have to, it's, you know, it's kind of like sometimes become um, frustrating to ask help, you know. So that individually is quite frustrating. And in Boston, we do, don't do ask for help that easily. <laughs> And in many cultures, uh, elderly people are revered for their wisdom. Uh, however, here we discount elderly people. Mm -hmm. We discount them older. Uh, you won't remember this, but uh, uh, years ago, back in the 60s and 70s, there was a uh, saying out there, don't trust anyone over 30. <laughs> 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 Perhaps some, but I don't know if you remember that or not. But should that, we trust you? Uh, well, of, course, <laughs> of course not. Uh, I think you. I thought you'd figured that out by now. But, uh, but uh, no. But the thing here, here it's a clear where we treat individuals, we treat people, and we do not try treat diagnoses. We treat every people person as a person of worth and dignity. Okay, and sometimes when they've been disrespected, when they've come from non-validating backgrounds, either through family or where they're at, uh, what are some of the ways where we can help assist them to help themselves? What type of areas in their life, building on small achievable goals? Well, perhaps if a person cannot cook a full meal dinner anymore, perhaps if they cannot clean a whole house anymore, there is certainly something that they can do. Okay, and even even asking a person f for advice, mm -hmm. asking them, "Here's my situation. What would you do if you were me?" Mm -hmm. can provide so much so much worth to an individual, and and the fact that they're being heard. So, if there's anything that people are taking away from today, perhaps to step back and take a phenomenological view of an individual to see the world through their eyes and what they're seeing, and that every single human being has value and worth. Okay, uh, simply because we don't have to accept the behavior does not mean that we disrespect or discount the person. We all we always respect the individual, and sometimes that that can be a little difficult. Sometimes uh, for caregivers involved in uh, some pretty intensive uh, type of uh, care, especially when they feel that they're not getting the due that they deserve. Okay, from either that individual or other family members, it can be awfully. Uh, Awful, awfully frustrating. Uh, however, there are there are different types of support groups for for caregivers uh, who have elderly people in their lives, or it, it doesn't have to be elderly. Let's say somebody who's disabled, somebody who's handicapped, uh, somebody who's had a traumatic injury, 
that they need they, they need care and quite often the caregiver needs just as much care as the other individual so my hope is that uh, everyone got some something out of that experience that we had and uh, we plan to hope to have have many more so would you uh, tell the folks how they could reach us Derek uh, to, con to continue the conversation please like us on Facebook plus us on Google plus or follow us on Twitter under Seclair life you can also find this and other ground rounds on youtube.com slash Seclair video and find audio versions on iTunes Stitcher Spreaker and iHeartRadio and please visit www.seclair.com for more info about us and other articles on our great blog. And also, we'd like to uh, mention that Seclair will be having a conference on May, May the 1st mm -hmm. at uh, Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville. And we hope that you tune into the Seclair channel uh, to get updates and get some highlights of that particular conference. And also, on May the 22nd, the uh, Sisters of Charity in Greensburg will be hosting a uh, health and wellness conference mm -hmm. also. And we're hoping that everyone attends. And as always, we give a free prescription. I hope sometime you give free prescriptions too when you can be able to write them. However, <laughs> we give them free. Well, first of all, I'd like to give you a large prescription for hope and a prescription that reads fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we fish, fish without bait. bait. We fish without bait. So until the next time, uh, we hope you join us. And should you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please contact us on the social media sites that Derek mentioned. Until the next time, be good to yourself. Mm -hmm.